Uh, hello, everyone. It's my privilege to share my experiences of teaching Rust and uh, our research work about uh, doing some code recommendation to assist Rust beginners. Okay, so uh, my talk uh, consists of these three parts. The first one is my background, and the second part is my experiences of teaching Rust, and finally, my research work on some code uh, recommendation uh, research. And uh, I'm a tenure track associate professor at Fudan University. My research interest uh, lies in software reliability, especially using some uh, program analysis uh, techniques uh, to enhance uh, software to detect bugs. And I have uh, done some publications related to Rust. So that's uh, how I know Rust. That's how I learn Rust. So uh, the main course I teach at Fudan University uh, uh, these two courses. The first one is uh, a postgraduate course. Uh, it's uh, uh, memory safety and uh, program language design. Uh, in this course, I teach um, uh, the basic design principles of Rust and the memory safety issues it aims to address. And the second course is compiler theory. It's an undergraduate course. And in this uh, course, I also introduce some uh, concepts related to Rust. For, uh, for example, some uh, grammars of the type system. So why um, I'm interested in Rust? Because it, uh, I'm um, doing sort of very reliability research. And uh, in this field, we cannot trust developers, of course. Uh, where in the past, there are already many papers working on detecting bugs through uh, software testing or static analysis or dynamic analysis. But um, there are still, uh, as you know, still many bugs in software. Uh, so Rust uh, aimed to tackle this problem from a new trial. It uh, um, tried to prevent critical bugs through language design while still offering adequate control uh, flexibility. Well, the, the goal is ambitious, but it's, still, uh, it's also very challenging to balance uh, between the security and the usability. So uh, that's why uh, I'm curious about whether Rust can achieve the goal. So I did my research work uh, by studying uh, many bugs, um, like some CVEs, and do some um, program analysis research related to, to Rust. So I want to highlight the result of my survey. Uh, so the survey is based on uh, a data set of uh, over 100 memory safety bugs, and uh, these bugs. Uh, some bugs are from a third, a third party libraries and some bugs from the standard libraries or the compilers. And the result, um, the, the main result is uh, Rust is really effective in memory safety protection. Um, as an evidence, all these bugs they require unsafe code uh, except uh, the compiler bug. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, most uh, CVEs, which are the, the, the most uh, critical bugs, uh, they are uh, API soundness issues. Uh, now this uh, CVE is uh, found uh, in executable programs, which means um, the APIs they are sound, uh, the, the bug reporters, they, they can uh, write some uh, proof of concept examples. Uh, they call this unsound safe APIs and uh, without using any unsafe code, they can trigger some memory safety problems. So uh, all these bugs, they are uh, API soundness issues. They are mild issues. Unless uh, these, um, these uh, soundness issues, they, they propagate, they escalate, escalate to some executables, they will not lead to uh, security consequences. And uh, in practice, I, I found no such bug report. So that, that's the second evidence why Rust, uh, that, that convinced me Rust is really effective. So uh, I, uh, based on my uh, result, I think Rust is a successful language. I, I also uh, get some um, similar feedback from um, my colleague or student. My student told me as long as I, uh, as a Rust program can compile, the executable is always likely to work. It will not crash. Um, and uh, another senior Rust developer developer told me I can always feel my skill improvement in using the language. There are many uh, um, uh, interesting concepts uh, to learn. 
And the second reason why I, I choose to teach Rust because it's a new language with very few legacy features. Um, imagine C++, uh, the intelligent pointers. Uh, some, some people um, uh, often uh, try to compare intelligent pointers with Rust, uh, the, the reference counter and Rust ownership. But um, in C++, uh, plus, you can still use raw pointers as you, you um, very um, often. So uh, C++, plus, plus, the, the, the language is, is not as, as secure because um, there are many uh, legacy features. And besides, there are many attractive features of Rust uh, as a, a new program language besides a memory safety guarantee. For example, the power, powerful system and uh, the exception handling uh, mechanism. I will use these two uh, concrete examples to, to, to demonstrate the, the, the features I like. The first one is uh, the variable declaration uh, grammar is very simple, but it's very, um, uh, I think it's very important. Um, so as you know, in Rust, the tag always comes after uh, the identifier, and but which is very different from uh, C++, the tab come before the, uh, the identifier. So um, what's, um, what's important here is that uh, for, 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 for such syntax, you can, it, it is much easier to develop an efficient top-down pattern or, or recursive descent pattern. And uh, secondly, uh, it's, uh, the code will look more compact for tab inf inference. Uh, for C++, you have to, uh, since um, you have to um, write some uh, tab before the identifier, so the pattern will is, is back some uh, tab um, as a placeholder. So if you, uh, you, you, you want to uh, omit the, the tab before the identifier, you have to use auto, but in Rust, you can directly uh, uh, omit the, the, the tab. And the second example is a trait bound, which can uh, uh, developers have to declare uh, bound, bounded generic parameters, which is very different to other uh, program languages with uh, generic parameters, such as um, uh, C++, you can um, declare uh, a generic parameter with a template, but you cannot bound um, the, the, the template. Um, C++, plus plus, uh, C++ for, for other language like C Sharp, uh, Java, they they also have um, uh, they also have such trait bound. But uh, I think uh, Rust uh, in Rust is very um, it's very convenient to use uh, such bound, and uh, they are very useful for debugging and uh, uh, also very useful for the the, the security control. Uh, thinking about uh, uh, the the send and the sync trait, they are very uh, important for the memory safety. So in the second part, I will, I will uh, sh share my experiences of teaching Rust. I will focus on the the, the uh, postgraduate course, and in this course, um, due to the the lockdown, um, this, this spring in Shanghai, we only have uh, fourteen weeks to teach this course, and there are three. Uh, the, there are three parts. Uh, in the first part, I, I teach the foundations of memory safety. In the second part, I, I teach the, the syntax, the, the grammar of Rust and the, the design of Rust. And in the uh, third part, because it's a postgraduate course, so I introduced some uh, advanced topics to the student. So uh, in, uh, for each week, we have uh, three units. Um, in each class, we have uh, four, 45 minutes, and I use two uh, units for teaching and one unit for in-class practice, because unless the students are really uh, coding something, they, they cannot uh, really um, uh, learn, grasp the, 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 the skill. So uh, uh, for in-class practice, they are a taking experiment and the coding, exper uh, coding uh, practice. So, uh, for example, for the when teaching the foundation and memory safety, I did an attacking uh, experiment related to the buffer overflow and the heap uh, heap overflow attack, also the concurrent memory uh, access attack. And unless a student they really realize the the, the bad consequences of these memory safety issues, 
they will not uh, really appreciate the design of raft because they spend a lot of uh, they will spend a lot of time to to fat with this uh, borrow checker or, or, or other uh, checks uh, of the compiler. So that's the thing uh, I think why it is important to teach this uh, foundation of memory safety. And uh, uh, eventually, this um, basic this foundation are really useful. Um, uh, so uh, later uh, in my uh, later slides, I will mainly focus on this rough coding uh, practices. Uh, so it's um, I have uh, four four coding practices for my student. So the first one is to implement a binary search tree or a, a double link list because uh, the, the double link, uh, link list is much difficult uh, for, uh, uh, compared to the binary tree because um, the uh, it requires uh, the object might be uh, should be owned by two uh, two different should have different two different owners so the student have to uh, either have to use unsafe code or, or the, the reference counter so in the second coding experiment uh, ask the student to extend uh, the struct to support generic parameters and trace uh, so they will implement the trace uh, such as uh, eq or Arduino. Um, in, in the uh, third um, assignment, the student will implement an iterator for the struct. They will demonstrate how the filter works. In this uh, assignment, they will practice a closure. So in the uh, fourth assignment, the student has to rewrite the struct to be stressive. They will implement the uh, sync and sync treat and show the struct is uh, stressive. So basically, um, this, um, my teaching um, teaching materials and th these coding uh, practices, they, they grow uh, radically. The, the core part is uh, ownership. And then um, with these goals, uh, the students can learn uh, the type system, uh, uh, including the generic treat and closure, and finally the concurrency uh, issues. So my student, um, according to the feedback from the student, uh, most stu students can finish the assignment in two hours, is, except one student, uh, it do, uh, uh, he, he take the double linked list uh, assignment and uh, use eight hours to do the first uh, um, coding practice. So uh, one interesting uh, problem, uh, um, in appeared in a lot of social media and, and uh, we just discussed by, by, uh, by you guys and it's, it's just rough difficult to, to learn. Uh, I also get some feed, uh, responses from my students that, that uh, they are very interesting. Um, one student told me um, I just uh, I'm familiar with the ownership and another student told me I just really have uh, much restrictions on developers. So, I, a third, third student told me, Rust, although Rust is difficult but interesting, as I, I have to spend my time combating with the uh, compiler borrow check and the reference issues. And the fourth student told me, it's not that difficult if uh, you have some uh, C plus, plus background, but I think lifetime is uh, really hard. So, uh, uh, my understanding of uh, the, the learning curve is. As I tried in my class, if the student uh, has uh, some program background, and uh, if we uh, assume a minimal raster for the beginners, we, although it is still not easy to write a uh, compatible code because students have to, um, to, to learn the ex exclusive mutability principle and lifetime mechanism, but it should be manageable, all students can. Uh, finish their assignment uh, within two or three hours. Uh, I think the most uh, difficult things uh, are the uh, advanced features of Rust. Um, uh, on one hand, Rust brings a barrier to reading the code read by others, especially some scary code as you posted on the uh, the, the the tulip. And uh, secondly. Uh, especially for some uh, developers from uh, C++ uh, uh, transferred from these uh, other programming languages, they may ignore the sound 
some needs requirement of their APIs, which is the medical rust uh, for the memory safety protection. So uh, after uh, here, oh, oh, sorry. I, I think we're about at 15 minutes. So maybe if you want to take like one or two minutes to quickly tell us about the code recommendation, and then we can move on to-, to Okay, okay. Brief so for, yeah. for, for code uh, recommendation, I will be really focused on the uh, some unnecessary uh, usage of a safe code. So we want to suggest the equivalent safe code to, uh, to uh, developers. I will uh, skip these uh, details. There are some uh, obvious patterns from GitHub of the Rust doc. Um, so uh, our solution is to uh, based on the language server protocol uh, to recommend uh, to 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 uh, to do some recommendations where developers are coding. So the techniques uh, it's mainly based on the uh, the CMS uh, graph neural network. So we can uh, build a knowledge base and uh, use a CMS uh, graph neural network to generate some embeddings. The technique is uh, more efficient than the traditional bipartite graph matching. Uh, it's, it's much efficient if, if you have a large code base. So basically, uh, we extract uh, the, the attributed uh, control flow graph and use uh, the graph neural network to generate the embeddings. So uh, finally, uh, uh, concluding remarks is Rust is a successful language with many attractive features. And my experience of teaching uh, to, uh, is really encouraging. Uh, I got positive feedback based on the performance of my students. And however, the magical Rust lets in the soundness requirement of safe APIs uh, is uh, a declarative security. So to assist, assist the Rust beginners to write high quality code, we can summarize some common bar patterns and make recommendations when, where they are coding. So the te techniques uh, are mainly based on language server protocol and CMS a graph neural network. So um, that's all. All right, great. Thanks, Wei. Uh, so we have time for maybe one or two questions. If anybody wants to pop one in the chat and otherwise, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have our next speaker get ready soon. Any questions for Hui? Sorry, I go too quick for the uh, no sorry, part. It's 20, 22 pages of my slide. I thought it was uh, a 20 minutes talk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so one question is, could you extend ideas of recommendation to code with type errors? So does your recommendation work when, the, when a program is ill-typed, or could it? Uh, so uh, that's for the good question. Uh, I think uh, the code recommendation, um, as long as it really uh, Depends on whether you can build, you can, you can, you can collect uh, much, uh, uh, many sample, enough sample to train the uh, knowledge base. So, because as you know, uh, for, you, we use um, a neural net network. You have to do, you have to collect many code, uh, hundreds of code or thousands of code, and do code recommendation. So as long as we traditionally to detect type errors, we usually use uh, some um, static analysis approach, and uh, it's really heuristic to use uh, this uh, code recommendation approach. But it's worth to uh, to it's worth trying, I think. Yeah. 